What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including AEW is banning a lot of things, Becky Lynch undergoes surgery, Rikishi talks a bloodline and possible place in the group's storyline, WWE changes Randy Orton's theme music, a former superstar interested in a return, John Cena in Barbie, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at AEW is banning a lot of things. At top of today's news is a report from Fightful Select that AEW is banning or placing restrictions on certain moves and fan interactions by wrestlers. The report hasn't been confirmed, but Fightful noted it's important to note that while multiple people in the company confirmed the document was legitimate, there were numerous talent who said that they hadn't seen it as of yet. The details include bans and restrictions as follows. Specifically, a document was sent out that outright banned unprotected chair shots to the head, shots to the back of the head, buckle bombs, and blind moves backwards into the turnbuckle, fencing responses, unnatural position of arms following a concussion, seizure cells, spitting, bleeding in the crowd, weapons or projectiles into the crowd, taking drinks or food from guests in the crowd, or physical contact with the crowd. We're told that nothing with blood on it should be thrown into the crowd. The restrictions on fan interaction should be common sense given the risks involved with exposing audience members, not to mention wrestlers, to bodily fluids. On a lesser note, actions like MGF grabbing drinks from fans may be seen as him staying in character, but it's unwise in today's society and a bad look for AEW and its corporate partner Warner Brothers Discovery. Other moves may be allowed but are now subject to approval by AEW officials. Some of the moves that require prior authorization are table ladder chair spots in and out of the ring, only allowed with padding, any elevated spots outside the barricades, dives and ladder spots on stage around the arena and other places outside the ring, all pile driver tombstone variations including sit down drivers, inverted slash poison hurricane runner and vertebrakers. What's particularly interesting about this report is that it comes as rumors persist that AEW and WBD are working out a new TV rights deal, with rumors suggesting AEW could move to a monthly pay-per-view model, possibly even airing the shows on WBD's max streaming service. If this pans out, these rumored restrictions could be the result of WBD wanting AEW to tone down the product to not only protect its image, but to protect it from lawsuits. The legal concept of shared liability where both AEW and WBD could be collectively sued for an injury to a fan or a wrestler may have led to a closer look at how things are done in AEW. As Taz once quipped about AEW's COVID safety precautions during a pandemic, we don't run a sloppy shop. However, the number of sick bumps in AEW has been the source of criticism by some fans and pundits who are frankly shocked at the high risks taken each and every week on TV. If this report is accurate, it will hopefully cut down on sick bumps and such, not removing them entirely but reserving them for special occasions where wrestler safety can be maximized and the moves themselves seem more meaningful. What do you guys think of these bans and restrictions? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, a spoiler is AEW bringing in a big guest for Collision. This Saturday's AEW Collision is rumored to have a very special guest present for the finals of the Owen Hart Cup. Our spoilers ahead, so move on to our next story if you don't want to know who it is and be surprised. Wrestling legend Jushin Liger recently tweeted that he's headed to Canada for the tournament finals. Here's a translated tweet from him. I'm at Haneda Airport right now. From now on, I will go to Calgary, Canada via San Francisco. I was invited as a guest at Owen Hart's Memorial Tournament. I'm looking forward to Calgary after a long time. Who do you guys think will win this year's tournament? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Becky Lynch undergoes surgery. Now it looks like fans may have to answer to why the WWE was initially uncertain whether Becky Lynch could compete on this week's Raw. Well, it turns out the Raw star was sidelined by a medical procedure she recently underwent. The man spoke with the USA Today revealing, When I landed from London, I had to go to ER and get a cyst removed. Then I had to get that redone on Friday, but it was in the ring, fine, ready to go by Monday. As reported earlier this week, there were stories early on Monday that Becky was not medically cleared to compete, only for the man to show up that night on Raw and wrestle Zoe Stark. We send our best wishes to Becky Lynch after this medical procedure. Next up, Rikishi talks bloodline and possible place in the group's storyline. 
Is the WWE Hall of Famer Rikishi going to return to the ring to participate in the current Bloodline Civil War? During an interview with Sports Kida, Rikishi discussed how proud he is of his sons Jay, Jimmy and Solo, not to mention Roman Reigns. When asked about whether he'd show up to play a part in the Bloodline's breakdown storyline, he replied, I would have to go silent on that one. Now, there has been speculation about Rikishi showing up for Bloodline segments before, but so far he remains out of the spotlight. Would you guys like to see Rikishi show up? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Mandy Rose auctions off her gear. A former superstar Mandy Rose is auctioning off a piece of worn gear and so far the eBay auction is off to a massive start with the current top bid at $23,600. The former women's champion mentioned, This is the perfect addition to any wrestling fan's collection, a piece of Mandy Sachs' title match ring worn gear. This autographed wrestling memorabilia is one of a kind original signed by me. It's a must have for any collector of authentic sports memorabilia. Mandy went on to explain how the ring outfit is a homage to Nikki Bella and that this outfit was also worn during my last few matches of my career thus far. There are still 5 days left on the auction. How much do you think it'll go for? Next up, WWE changes Randy Orton's theme music. Is Randy Orton returning to wrestling? That's a question that fans have been puzzling over since pictures surfaced early in 2023 showing off a Jack Orton interacting with fans. Now the release of a new version of Randy Orton's theme Voices has some fans wondering whether it's a hint that the Viper is finally returning to action after being absent since May of 2022. As we mentioned on our website, there's speculation Randy could return at SummerSlam. While nothing has been confirmed, this latest tidbit is sure to have fans watching Raw closely for the Viper's return. In the meantime, have you guys heard it? If so, what do you think of it? Next up, a former WWE superstar interested in return? Is former superstar Ricardo Rodriguez returning to WWE? Ricardo, who famously served as Alberto Del Rio's personal ring announcer, hasn't been in the WWE since his 2014 release, but he told Wrestling News' Steve Fall that, I would definitely go back to WWE if given the opportunity. Rodriguez, who also competes as a wrestler, provides commentary and recently opened a wrestling academy, discussed how he landed his job as an announcer on SmackDown. I went into catering later that day at Raw. I was approached later on and I was asked if I wanted to do ring announcing the following day on SmackDown. I didn't know for what. They just asked me if I was available the next day in Bakersfield, California, to which I obviously said yes. They had asked me if I've ever done ring announcing before, which I never have, but I said yes. They asked me if I had a tuxedo, which I said yes, which I didn't. As many people in show business have noted during interviews or in their memoirs, they always answer yes when you're asked about playing a part. In Ricardo's case, he picked up a suit at a local thrift store, beginning a successful run in WWE. Next up, John Cena in Barbie. Now, Cena actually has a small part in the film as a merman version of Ken. Cena chatted about the role recently, explaining how he wanted to be in the film regardless of the part. I was blown away with the concept. I think it's going to be a movie that all audiences enjoy. I think it's going to be a movie that invokes conversation and I think it's going to be beautifully visually appealing. According to John, he sealed a deal when he ran into his co-star Margot Robbie, who stars as a title character in Barbie. In an accidental run-in with Margot Robbie, I said I'll pretty much do whatever you guys need because I really enjoy the movie and they asked me if I wanted to be a merman. I said yeah, sure. As Cena's Hollywood career continues to expand, some people are already claiming that the 16-time world champion could become even more successful than The Rock. And finally, Solo Sokoa shows he can do it all. Last but not least, it's official, Solo Sokoa can do it all. Not only is Roman Reigns' enforcer able to dish out an ass whoop into opponents left, right and center, but a video shows he can sing and dance with the best of them while cleaning the kitchen. What do you guys think of Solo's singing and dancing skills? Let us know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.